Recently, another interesting anti-tank mine was spotted in use in Ukraine. The Estonian PK-14 or M-14 directional mine appeared in photographs which were shared online around the 9th of September. The PK-14 is a directional mine capable of penetrating about 50mm of armour at a distance of 50 metres. Unlike the German DM-22, which is also in service with Ukrainian forces, the PK-14 uses a 1.5kg shape charge of PBX to create an explosively formed penetrator. The PK-14 is capable of damaging most light armoured fighting vehicles. It can be set up on a small tripod or even mounted to a tree, telephone pole or post. This is useful for attacking targets from above. The Estonian company who manufactures the mine lists it as the PK-14 or M-14. The mine is produced by Terramil under licence from another Estonian defence company, Eesti Arsenal, who also offer several training systems for the mine. The PK-14 has a diopter sight which attaches to the top of the mine and allows it to be laid across the expected path of a target. The site itself is a cheap tube with a narrow aperture, which has been described to us by a member of the Ukrainian Armed Forces as looking like a scope you would find on a cheap toy gun at the corner store. The mine's casing is cleverly designed with a series of grooves that allow the site to be slid into place and for the mine itself to be mounted on its tripod. This instructional video from the manufacturers shows how the mine can be set up. The mine is command initiated using a shock tube integrated system. This means that the mine isn't tripped by a wire like the German DM-22 or by movement as in the Russian PTKM-1R, but in person by an operator. In practice, the operator would set up the mine at a location the enemy is expected to pass, unspool a shock cord back to a concealed position and wait for the enemy vehicle to move within range of the mine. In theory, it's possible to rig up the mines with a makeshift pressure plate detonation system. The pressure plate from a conventional mine like a TM-46 or TM-57 could be wrapped with some deck cord with a blasting cap at the end, so when the vehicle rolls over the mine, it detonates. The mine can also be set up to strike from above, so it hits the tank's weaker top armour, or buried in the middle of the road so it can strike up through the vehicle's belly armour. Special thanks to Nucking Foot's Yuri, uh, who is best known as the turret gunner who ran an M2 Browning and was handed AT4s by his vehicle crew when he called for more ammunition in a video that recently went viral. Yuri has provided the photos and video of the PK-14 in his unit's inventory. Here's a few clips from Yuri's video. He runs us through the components of the mine and how it's set up. I definitely encourage you to check out the full video. There's a link in the description box below. Setting up the directional mine. You have your tripod assembly. You can either put the legs in this way or this way to make it a lower profile. The beaver tail right here. You have the siding assembly. You have your shock cord right here. Your detonator, your initiator. You take the detonator, you unplug this rubber ground, grommet on the back, you take the detonator, you stick it in there. Simple, very simple, very quick setup of the mine is the wall mounting bracket. So you basically just take this. And now we can mount it onto a fence, a tree, really anything. It's a small, affordable mine, but it's currently unknown how many PK-14 mines have actually been sent to Ukraine. But Estonia, along with other Baltic countries, has been a significant supporter of Ukraine since before Russia's invasion in February. Estonia began procuring the mines for the Estonian Defence Force in 2015. In terms of how they may be deployed in Ukraine, the small size and light weight of the PK-14 is especially useful for small Ukrainian reconnaissance and special forces teams operating on the edge of and behind Russian lines. Yuri explained that the PK-14 is preferred over conventional Soviet mines as they're lighter. He told us, normally we take two or more with us, set up an ambush and wait. We could mount them high if need be and get the top of the turret or even bury them in the middle of the road so it explodes under the centre of the tank. Again, huge thanks to Yuri for sharing some of the photographs and footage used in this video. 
enabling us to take a closer look at the PK-14. Definitely check out Yuri's YouTube channel and his Instagram page, links to those in the description box below. And over in the accompanying article for this video at armoursbench.com. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Please consider supporting us via Patreon, you get early access to all of our videos and we have a number of other cool perks over there as well. Thanks again for watching, catch you next time.